Hello, my name is Seth Juarez, technical evangelist from DevExpress. Today we're going to spend a minute building a table report. If you take a look at our website here, devexpress.com, we have a series of demos. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the table report. I'm going to show you exactly the steps that you need to take in order to get this report to be just like this. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I've opened up an instance of Visual Studio, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a new website. So we're going to file new and website. We're going to call this website Table Report. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to add a data source, and then we need to add a data set to pull the data that we want. In order to do that, we go to App Data, right click, and we're going to add an existing item. With all of our demos, we have a series of databases and pictures and files and so forth that you are welcome to use in testing our software. So this database is called Nwind and it lives in the demo folder under components and data. And so we're going to do nwind.mdb and hit OK. Notice that when we add the nwind.mdb file over to the left in Server Explorer, we have access to the actual tables. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to add a new folder. This is going to be the app underscore code folder. And in there, we're going to add a new item. That new item is going to be a data set. So let's go ahead and select it and let's call it Northwind. Okay. This particular data set, it, although it has a lot of tables, we want a really a special shape of the data that maps to this. So let's go ahead and build it. Let's right click and add a table adapter. And in that table adapter, we're gonna to connect to the Northwind database. Let me hit next. We'll go ahead and leave the connection string as is. And we're gonna use SQL statements. Now you can use the query builder to, to build the query, but I've already, I've already set up the query and I'm gonna copy it and paste it and explain what it's doing. Notice that it's selecting certain fields. The only aggregate field here is, that we have is quantity times unit price from the order details where the order ID equals a specific order ID. Let me hit finish. Okay, what we will need though is we'll need a parameter in order to pass the order ID in. Let's add that. The parameter is of type integer and let's call it order ID. And hit OK. The next thing we have to do is to make sure that we're actually getting the data that we want. So let's hit preview data and let's put a value in there, 11077, which happens to be the same one that we got in our original report. And let's hit preview. And there it is, 25 rows. Let's hit close. Let's save and let's build real quick to see, to make sure that everything is happening the way we want it to. Okay. Okay, now that we've got the data set up properly, what we need to do now is add the report. So let's do that by right clicking on app code and we're gonna add a new item. We're gonna use the extra report class and I'm gonna call it order detail report. In this order detail report, we're going to use the following data source. Notice our project already has the Northwind database. And notice that the data member we're going to use is the order details. And now all we need to do is say, hey, use this order details table adapter. Okay. Now here on the left, you see the fields from the order detail. I'm going to go ahead and drag them, bring it up, and hit save. Now, in order to get this particular report to work in this context, what we need to do is we need to tell this particular report class where to get the data from. And in order to do that, what we do is we go to the order detail report code, right? And we add some constructor code here. What we wanna do is we wanna set the connection string of the table adapter to the right setting. In order to do that, what we need to do is set up the order details table adapter and we want to set the connection string which is a string 
equal to a new OLEDB connection. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the connection string right here. That connection string, as you probably know, looks something like this. And now what we need to do is we need to set up the path. So we're going to say string path equals HTTP context using the web, the current request, and we're going to map the path, right? And the path that we want to map is the app underscore data path, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to append to it the nwind.mdb file. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create a function that allows us to pass in the particular order ID that we want. Let's call it set parameter and let's pass in an integer of order ID. So let's do method and let's call it set report parameter Okay, and let's create a variable uh, of int, and let's call it order ID. And hit okay. What we need to do is get the north wind data set and clear all of the elements in there. And then what we need to do is we need to fill the order details table with the order details adapter. So let's do that. And we're going to pass in the Northwind one order details table, and we're going to pass in the following order ID. Okay, let's go look at the report. So we haven't done a lot, but what we've done is we've set it up in a manner that allows us to preview the report. Let's hit save. Okay, let's go ahead and build a web form now to host this report. Let's go to the site master and let's add a content page. Right, this content page is called default to, let's, let's change it to table report. And let's make sure that all of the files have been changed properly. Let's change this to table report. And let's go to the page and make sure that the code file here says table report and make sure that it inherits from table report here. All right. The first thing we need to do now is we need to add the reporting controls. The first one that we're going to add is the report viewer. Let's move it up. The second one that we're going to add is the report toolbar. Okay, let's go to design time and show you that it's all there. The next thing we need to do is we need to tell the report toolbar exactly which report viewer it's going to use. Okay, in order to do that, let's go to the report toolbar and let's go down to the report viewer and select the available report viewer. The next thing we need to do is we need to actually load the report. So let's, uh, let's dummy up an order ID and let's do 11077, which is the one we had before. We're going to say report viewer one dot report equals create report and we're going to pass in the order id this method does not exist so let's create the stub all right now what we're going to do is we're going to go to order details report and we're going to say report equals new order detail report and then we're going to call the set parameter method Looks like it's not there. So let's go to the definition and see what happened. Looks like I set it to private. If you hold down the Alt key, the Alt key, and then press up or down, you can manually go to each of those and change it. There you go. Let's go back. Let's set the parameter now to order ID. Okay, and return the report. Okay, good. Let's set this as the start page and let's hit play and see what happens. 
All right, looks like it's loaded and it's getting the data that we want. All right, we built the report, but it doesn't look anything like this. Let's fix that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do might look like cheating, but it isn't. I have here open in another Visual Studio project, the actual report. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to extract this layout and then import it. And then I'm gonna go through each item and show you how it is done. So let's go to save and let's save it to the desktop and let's save it to table report. Now let's move this over and let's import the layout. We'll give it a second and notice that it's back again. Let's rebind the data source and let's rebind the data table adapter. All right, just to show you that it works, let's go to view in browser. Okay, notice that again, this looks exactly like the other report. Let's go through each of these items and show you how it's done. The first is that it has uh, this alternating row style. Let me show you how that's done. What happens is every report has what's called the style sheet. Notice that this style sheet has an even style and an odd style. The way you apply it is you go to the table row and go to styles. And notice that for the even style, we've applied the even style and the same for the odd style. Notice that the order ID has been bound to the order details order ID. Notice there's only one, so it's okay. Now let's talk about the group footer and the page or report footer. This particular footer is creating a sum per page of the subtotal items, right? Notice that the format string is a little different and it allows us to, to format this string exactly how we would like it. The summary is running by page. Let's go to the report footer. Notice we're doing exactly the same thing, but the summary is running by report. Okay, this field is a special field. It's a page info uh, uh, field. And notice that what we're doing is we're setting it to date and time. Uh, you can see this control is the page info control right here. These are standard labels. This is a picture box and so is this. Let's uh, center it that way. Okay. Notice that one of the things that I, I always forget is you can use this, this tool up here to center things horizontally and you can use this to center things vertically. All right, let's look at it. There it is. Okay. The last thing we need to do is get this text box to work. So let's get to work on that. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag in a text box. And that is found here, ASPX text box. Let me put it up there. There it is. Uh, let's give it a name of text order ID. And let's set the default text to 11077, which is the default one we have. And we're gonna not enable view state. Now, we're gonna enable some client-side events. In order to do that, we're going to handle the key press function, and we're gonna call it order ID key press, and we're going to write some JavaScript to handle that. Okay, the way we do that is we go up here to the header content, and we say script language equals uh, JavaScript, some quotes around that and we're going to say type equals JavaScript okay now we need to handle the particular event notice that this event is order ID key press so we're going to say function 
order ID key press, the sender and the event args. And that's going to be the function that we're going to set. Now, we're only going to handle a certain key press, and that's going to be the enter key. So if the key code is not 13, what we're going to do is we're going to return. Otherwise, we're going to get the value and we're going to force that the min and max is obeyed. Now, this report viewer dot refresh, in order to, to do that, what we need to do is we need to go to the report viewer and we need to enable client side events. And the way to do that is to set the client instance name to report viewer one. And I've already done that. So if this does not get put in there, it will not respond to the refresh call. So let's go to view the browser. Let's put some in there, 10 to 48, enter. And there you go. Notice that it is refreshing. And you're saying, Seth, it's not doing anything. Well, let's do 10 to 49. Notice that it is posting back, but it always is returning 11077. Why is that? Well, you recall that I cheated when I created the page. I automatically said use this order ID. Let's change that. So text order ID dot text. And we're going to do an int dot parse of that. And we'll pass it in. And let's look at it one last time. All right, let's do a 10 to 48, hit enter. There it is. 10 to 49, enter. Let's do a 10 to 50. And our trusty 11077. There it is. All right, so I've taken you through the steps. Remember, the first step was we created the data source. The next step is we bound the report. The step after that is we created a generic page to handle it. The next step was we styled the report. And the last is that we added some interactivity to the ASP.NET page. I hope this has been useful. Thank you for watching and thank you for choosing DevExpress.